Well, hey there. We uh, recently unboxed this M Audio Oxygen Pro 49. And I would do want to distinguish between the Oxygen Pro and just the regular Oxygen. Uh, slight different uh, set of features. And uh, kind of the first thing I wanted to do was just plug it in, turn it on, and see if it works. Um, here we go. Oh, I forgot to turn it on. I'll turn this on. Everything lights up. That's good. Looks like the uh, the metronome or the tempo is is uh, blinking there. We've got some multicolored pads with this preset. All right, so we have uh, loaded this up. Let's expand this a bit, make it larger. I don't have much in here. I've got most of the channels blocked, but I can see it's already set up. I First time in, I did go uh, with some of the instructions and set up a, a, again, I'm using Logic Pro on Mac OS X. I set up a Mackie H -I -H -U -I control device, and I did go ahead and assign it. So let's see, I assigned it to Oxygen Pro 49 Mackie HUI input and output. I think it's going to help with some of the DAW functions. All those are in the instructions. We'll kind of go over there those a little later. Uh, also, when I turn it on, I just want to see if it works. Ooh, it's liking the sound. Octave down. Octave up. And it tells me over here, go back down how many octaves it is above, maybe some pitch. That one doesn't have a lot of, uh, let's, let's try this, this sound here. Nice. Okay. Very cool. Do the pads work? seem to be assigned certain um, items. So uh, the next thing I wanted to do is kind of go through a little bit of the software and the installation and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and uh, close this. We will leave Logic open for now. And uh, you've got the M Audio website. And actually, we um, get this little card right here. Um, it has a little website. It says visit mAudio.com software downloads. So the first thing we get to do is we go to the website and it has that card. And then you go there and you've got uh, thank you for purchasing your M Audio product. Log in so you can log in, create an account, which you'll need to do. You register uh, basically the code that's on the back. Uh, and then you go to download your software. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to log in like I, like I already did, but uh, you may already have one. And here, uh, normally once you register, it takes you directly to my products and you have all these things you can download. You've got a firmware update. I always like to check. I'm sure there's in some instructions that tell you how to check which firmware you have, but I just went ahead and updated it. There is a preset editor, which I think is going to be important for setting up this for the first time. Uh, if you don't want to use just the basic defaults. Um, a lot of troubleshooting set up for different kind of DAWs. Logic uh, is, and I'm going to go ahead and open that real quick. Um, Logic has some instructions. Once you update the firmware, uh, it will take you through how to switch it over to DAW and also how to, how to uh, connect that controller HIU that I, HUI that I was talking about. So that is some important stuff. Let's see, you also have uh, the software manager and I've installed that. That basically gives you all the different software and goodies that you get with this as well as the firmware updater. Um, and, and that's really uh, what, what you might wanna kind of cover first. Then uh, once everything's installed, uh, you can come back to Logic. I'm gonna go ahead and open up that file. All right, so here we have it. So uh, you do have some settings if you uh, 
uh, pretty much long press these, you get selections. So you can set your DAW, um, you can set in the global presets, you can set whether you're using a Mac or a uh, Windows, Mac or Windows. Um, you, you can also set your presets. Um, I don't yet have, so I'm gonna go back out of that. Um, and you can work on either your preset or your DAW. If you wanna control your DAW, you can do that, or you can just do straight preset. So, um, for instance, if we're more under DAW, I notice that there's a few things you can do. You can, you can turn this, this dial and you can select the different sounds. So, very cool. And then you can go to the next sound, which is, kind of cool. Uh, maybe the bass. That's cool. And then uh, maybe maybe a pad down here on the end, right? Let's give it some mod. Wonderful. All right. So if we go back up to the uh, a hypercube. A couple other things. I believe that we have uh, the knobs right now are routed to um, the pans. So if you if you see, if you see this first item up at the top, instrument one, you can see when I turn the knob one, it go it will go left and right. It's just kind of cool. All right, very good. Okay, so we've got this sound, and you've got to set up your sync correctly that it's sending out MIDI time code but if that's the case you can either have internal or external right now you can tell it has we'll both have internal or external but right now you can tell the this item here the controller the controller is controlling its own tempo it is probably not see it's 120 whereas if you look on our DAW it's 129 you can turn on the ARP and let's just see what happens That's cool, and then pretty, pretty straight and accessible. Let's go down an octave. That's pretty cool. You can even latch it. But the question is, how do you do this if you're you have a song going? So um, you you'll you can long press these things to set things. And right now my clock is set for internal external. You can simply click this, change it to external, back out of it. Um, uh, I don't think it will work because there's nothing playing. But if we get this. Anyway, there you go. Of course, you could latch it, right? Let's we'll say, uh, that so the um, this is set up pretty straightforward I'm gonna go ahead and stop the drums set up pretty straightforward you've got your arp your latch uh, there's scale so you can hit scale and you probably have to shift edit scale and probably pick mmm let's do a okay and let's see if we can play other anything other in there let's change to a different sound So we're in A major. So we might want to go shift minor. Basically, scale will let you play. The keys are not in that key, but it will move them down or up, depending on how that works. 
Probably not something I would definitely uh, I would necessarily use, but it might be helpful if you're doing I uh, like the cord. If you set up a cord, so uh, I'm not exactly sure how this works. So this will be, this will be a learning thing for me as well. So let's do edit. Okay, so mo smart. We should probably do smart key uh, A minor. All right, let's just see if that works. That's the whole chord. <laughs> So I think it's kind of a smart chord here. I just turned it off, I'm gonna back out of it. That's cool. Um, basically, it'll stay within the key. They have smart chords, they have manual chords if you wanna do some funky and then move it across uh, the thing. So that's kind of cool. Again, pretty accessible, and that's one of the things that I'm really liking. There are some features, if you, if you go through this uh, global mode, um, let's see, and you, right now, all you can do is MIDI. But if you come over here to DAW, uh, all these buttons serve as uh, the first eight, uh, what are we, record? Record buttons. So if I press this, you'll notice that on tra instrument track three, it'll turn on and off. And then if this is select, you know, if you wanted to select a track, you basically just kind of go like that. It's a mute, you can kind of figure out select uh, mute three or not three there we go uh, you can also solo so maybe you only want instrument seven on there you go and then back to MIDI which kind of turns all those auto items off but it still will uh, allow you to go between the tracks also this is kind of cool if you hold down here let me widen his tracks here a little bit if you uh, hold down shift it will also adjust the sub Oh, if you click it, then it will do size and click it. So yeah, there is a little bit of learning curve. Uh, there's also a note repeat, which you can turn off momentarily. And a note repeat only works for the pads. So if you're doing a you drum and you want to do like a, a fill or something like that, I wonder if this is a full set. All right, so, so you see. And maybe we don't want it. We want like 16th. That's what that's for. You can also latch it. So uh, because it's down here, it's a shift. Now the latch is on. You can tell their their velocity. Anyway, there you go with that. That's kind of cool. Um, also, when you're doing the arpeggio, if we can, if we come back to that, uh, let's let's just go down to uh, something like this hypercube, right? Now, uh, if the DAW is running, it's going to go to the beat, so. And again, maybe we don't want 16. And maybe we want to latch this. And these will control some of the ARP controls. So right now, set that up. Maybe we want it down. Or maybe we want it up and then down. Up and then down and, or down and then up. And then there's the order that it was played. And then random. All those are kind of cool. You can also add octaves. Right? Um, you can add a gate. So it may be a short hit. Very cool. So there are definitely some controls. Now, uh, there are also some other DAW shortcuts. Save. This is an interesting save. I am not necessarily ha uh, something 
Not something I necessarily like because I like to save directly in my DAW and I don't want to accidentally hit this and then save if I'm not ready to. But there's also a quantize, there's a view. Uh, here, let's see. Uh, there's also an undo. This is a doing view, it looks like we already had that. Uh, there's also, you can pull up a new view. Uh oh. Uh, and then you can pull up this track as well. Pretty sure all of that is adjustable. And let's just take a quick look. I'm going to go ahead and load the uh, preset editor. And uh, you're going to find that there are a lot of options here. Let me move this over to the screen real quick. So if you've got a preset, I'm not sure this is the preset, and I'm going to pull it. I'm going to retrieve preset, and I happen to be on preset 9. I created a new one. There we go. So this is basically how the preset is. It's an external clock right now. Um, you've got your node. You've got your time division. You can change all these things to the basic, basic items. You can change the control codes and the channel that these all send out on. The same with the pads. And then if you notice, there are actually four different pads. If you press this, this is bank one. And this is bank two, bank three, and it refers to uh, these items here. It also refers to the knob. So uh, you can set all four, which is very useful to me uh, for my uses. And then if you go to DAW, you can change how these things control. So right here, it's the same as preset. So like, I don't like the save. Maybe I want it to be something other than the save button. Um, and then, of course, you can set the global. So this is a real quick way to set things up without diving in there real quick. Uh, but I don't see that I would need to do this a lot. You can also divide this in four, up to four different layers. It's such a small keyboard, I don't know if I would do that. And because I will be using main stage primarily for live performance, which is what I do. You can do all that stuff in main stage and you can basically take what's assigned here and route it to the the controls that I have on, on the screen. But all in all, um, I have the Novation Launch Key 37. I really like that. It's a very good build, just a lot like this. Uh, someone said, and I'm not sure about this, but M Audio is made by Novation. Uh, maybe it's a different branch. If the build quality seems the same, it, yes, it is plastic, but it seems nice and sturdy. I like the feel of the buttons. Uh, these are semi-weighted keys. Uh, these are semi-weighted keys. They're not quite, and they also even have like the little edge, edge things. I don't know if I would be used to that. I don't know how used to, I, how used to that I am, but uh, we will see. But the feel is good. It's got a great feel, and these feel uh, pretty good. The pads are, are responsive. Uh, there's right now there are different levels. There's linear, or there's a soft touch, or or a more sensitive touch, that sort of thing uh, that you can set. Um, but I'm I'm really looking forward. Oh, and I I didn't I neglected the main thing uh, also that when you have it connected to your DAW, you have a transport function here, which is going to be really important to me as well. Uh, and then, uh, so there we go. <laughs> but there you go. And if I want to loop it, I can, or I can turn it off. You can also lock the pads uh, so you can't move them. Same with the ARP knobs. Um, and I think there's definitely more to this. It's all powered by USB at this point. So uh, that's another plus for live situations. Uh, just kind of a quick overview. I hope you enjoyed it and we will maybe come back and do another video uh, how I route this through main stage, but we, we will see on that. All right. Thank you.